Hello, my name is Kerry Blackburn. I'm an instructor with Mortgage Educators in Compliance. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about the red flags rules. We're going to be talking about fraud as it pertains to our industry. But before we get into that good stuff, we want to start out this video with a giveaway. Who doesn't like a giveaway, right? All you must do to enter is like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment down below. And then we will pick one winner from the comment section. So make sure to leave a comment and in the description, we'll have that listed for you. Okay, let's get into this. The red flags rule gives a roadmap for a licensed mortgage company to develop, implement, and administer an identity theft program for the company. And you might ask yourself a question, when was the last time your company's plan was updated? Do you know? Does the plan need to be updated? Do you actually wait until after the fact that a violation has occurred? These things need to be in place so that you know how to act when a violation has occurred. Now, the FACTA red flags rule requires that mortgage loan officers be aware that they themselves are at the forefront of the mortgage business and have a strict responsibility to pay close attention to the loans that they are doing and the documents that they're handling. Remember, these are the borrower's most sensitive documents that have social security numbers and other private information. Documentation by a borrower is one of the first places to start as MLOs when trying to ensure that there are no suspicious activities occurring. So please keep in mind that one red flag that you might see necessarily doesn't mean that there is foul play or mean fraud is actually occurring, but keep in mind it actually could warrant further review and due diligence on your part. The FACTA red flags rule is a program that's required to include reasonable policies and procedures to identify the red flags of identity theft that may occur in day-to-day -day operations. The program must be designed to detect any red flags, such as detecting possible faked, forged, or altered IDs, such as driver's license, social security numbers, or any other document that requires proof of identity. Other red flags may occur when you see, for instance, the type or the spacing of words on a document. Perhaps the font actually varies within that actual document from the single source. There may be evidence of whiteout, like liquid correction paper or other alterations that want to blot out information and overtype information, which could be fraudulent. Any figure that contains round dollar amounts or squeezed in numbers is another reason to be on the lookout. It's a red flag. That's what we are looking out for. We're like detectives mm. as mortgage loan originators. We are, as mentioned earlier, the frontline defense for not only our borrowers, but also to be in compliance with state and federal law. We also need to look for inconsistencies identified throughout the file. For example, an applicant's name, maybe it varies, the phone numbers, addresses, social security numbers, and even handwriting. That's one of the biggest areas that we're seeing fraudulent activity is with handwriting fraud that's taking place on all of our documents. A red flag that shows more than one mortgage lender reflected throughout the file could also be a red flag or the parties to the transaction. Maybe they have more than one role to play. For example, on a real estate transaction, you could have the real estate agent is also acting as the landlord or the employer is also the gift donor. We need to make sure that there are non arm's length transactions on our, all of our transactions. Additionally, there may be applicants that appear to be related to another party in the transaction when we talk about non arm's length. And this of course would accept the gift donor. For example, a verifier of funds or an employer, an appraiser, escrow offer, etc. Now you may find the applicant's signatures vary throughout the loan package. Again, big red flag. And also if there is unusually long or unusually short loan processing times. These are things that we have to become accustomed to and be on the lookout for. We may see patterns or similarities in loan packages that are received from a specific broker a loan originator, real estate agent, 
or even a property seller. A borrower or any other party to the transaction, we need to make sure that they're not on Freddie Mac's exclusionary list. So now we're going to talk about red flags in our disclosures, and we handle a lot of different disclosures in our industry, and that can definitely be a place where red flags could exist. For example, things can be altered on a loan application. You might have altered down payment documents other than cash. For example, it could be rent credit or sale of personal property, a repayment of a loan or gift. When we talk about red flags and disclosures, you might have a situation where the loan is for an owner-occupied refinance, but the applicant does not live in the home. Or the applicant is actually buying an investment property or a second home, but does not own a current residence. You guys see where we're talking about? A red flag if an applicant is purchasing a second home in close proximity to the primary residence or a non-resort area. Or you have an applicant that claims to be downsizing to a smaller, less expensive home, but is retaining previous larger residence as a rental. Other signs include a significant or unrealistic employment commute distance from subject property that exists on owner-occupied transactions. It might be a post office box is the only address listed for the employer, especially on the handwritten application. You might see the employer's phone number is actually a cell phone, but the employer has a brick and mortar presence. Another questionable moment. You might see an applicant's office phone number is the same as the home number, but application or the documentation do not reflect self-employment. You might see the number of years on the job in that profession is actually inconsistent with the applicant's age. Or the applicant lists education that does not appear to be sufficient for the indicated employment position. So when we talk further on red flags, we'll move into a little bit of the credit reports, red flags that happen within the credit reports. Identity theft is used to commit mortgage fraud. And a good place to see if identity theft might be occurring is on the credit report. So there may be unresolved significant discrepancies between original and most recent credit report. For instance, you might have a borrower that has no established credit, possible use of alias or different social security number, or use of a child social security number. You might see insufficient credit history for age of the borrower a credit history that's inconsistent with income or employment. You might find recent inquiries also from mortgage lenders. Other credit alerts might show up. And you might also see a deceased borrower's social security number on this credit report. You might find a refinance of a recently originated loan that exists. Or you might see a, a type of hawk alert on the credit report that exists. All trade lines opened at the same time or opened recently is a definite red flag. Also, all trade lines at or approaching maximum limit, but credit score does not reflect this attribute of the credit profile. You know how that works when credit gets higher up to the limit, up to the maximum line, credit scores go down. If you see a variance in this, could be another red flag for you to look at. So when we talk about fraudulent employers, Fannie Mae issued a set of three fraud alerts related to fictitious employers. And as recently as 2020, Fannie Mae has been updating us on information related to this fraud alert. And the list has grown substantially as new employers are found to be fictitious. This seems to be centralized to employers in California at the present and loans being originated in California, but it's still a good thing to keep in mind wherever you are originated. Now, Fannie states that these are the red flags that mortgage loan originators should be looking for. Employment occupation does not sensibly coincide with a borrower's profile, age, or experience. Red flags may occur when a borrower on a current job is there for just a short period of time and prior borrower employment shows student, or perhaps the salary, the starting salary appears high. Additionally, fraudulent employers, red flags, purported employer does not exist, or an employer's purported location cannot be ascertained. There may be inconsistencies with pay stubs 
that lack typical withholdings such as health, medical, 401k, or gift letters, which are substantial and are not or cannot be supported through actual re-verification. When we talk about fraudulent employers, you might find non-sequential employment timelines are involved or generic pay stubs. So it's very important for us to realize that in our industry, what procedures does your office have to prevent fraud? We talk about different types of loan fraud, such as an air loan, which is a loan that has a straw or non-existent buyer or a non-existent property for that matter. Air loans are based on something entirely made up or pulled out of thin air. And you think to yourself, is this even possible today? The answer is yes. Signs that an air loan is in play, you'll have an air loan that typically involves a straw buyer. So any signs of a straw buyer could be sign of an air loan where there's no real estate agent that's employed, a common payer among loans is in the scheme. These are signs to look out for. We also can talk about Loan modification fraud. You've heard of those. These are quite big after the mortgage meltdown. It was the wild, wild west when it came to loan modification. People were wanting to redo their loans because their homes were actually, they owed more on them than the actual value. So things have actually come out in favor of monitoring these type of loan fraud schemes. So let's talk about it for a minute. A loan modification scheme typically involves a company that claims they can assist homeowners facing delinquency or for foreclosure with options that allow them to keep their property, refinance, or even modify their existing mortgage, repair, credit, or even help them stay into the home. Typically, these companies charge excessive upfront fees for their work, and then, more often than not, fail to execute any of their promises, thus putting the homeowners at a much higher risk of losing their home. So according to the Mars Rule of 2010, it makes charging upfront fees and charging any fee in the, if the modification doesn't benefit the borrower. It's completely illegal for them to charge upfront fees. So as MLOs, we may be in a position to help identify and assist our borrowers, even though you personally may not be able to perform the modification yourself, you can still be a great asset to the borrower to help them look out for these red flags. And as a trusted mortgage professional, consumers may contact you because they do not know where else they can turn to get true professional advice. Thanks for watching and please like this video and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so that you can be notified of new content. Now, if you're wanting more information to help you study or need test taking tips, very vital, don't forget to join our study group on Facebook. It's a great way to interact and have your questions answered. You can actually find the link down below. Thanks everyone and we'll see you next time.